so excited. <laughs> what an inspirational story. I love I love hearing the behind the scenes of how something came to be. Um and when when I get somebody who helped lay bricks into making that thing what it is, it really excites me because in my own journey I'm laying bricks and trying to build something. So what what I do is I try and take the lessons, the inspiration from what it is that you're saying and apply it in my own life. So first and foremost, you are a brilliant storyteller. Thank you. <laughs> you are so good at it. Hey, may you be called. If you're looking for somebody to come and inspire your people. But have you been doing uh, keynote speaks and have you been people inviting you after you started writing your book? Yeah, I've done quite a number. Ah, and, yeah. And I and I can understand why. Yeah, yeah. People are inviting me to talk to them, inspire them. Yeah. Yeah, I, I guess people need quite a bit of inspiration. Yes from somebody who has been through it. Yes. But I think the message is always that um, you can transform your life, mm. uh, but there are few things you have to do. Uh, but also you, for you to achieve success, you really need to be led by a very strong sense of purpose. Mm. Because sometimes we want success, but we don't work on the prerequisites. And it's like we expect it to just fall and find us. So that, that's really my message to the people I speak to. So powerful. Impact yeah. found you because you are looking for a place to exactly. do impact. Yes. So your version of success yeah. is the impact that your life will have. Yeah. And whatever you do, you have to really do it with passion. You have to be very focused. You have to know what you want. Mm. Yeah. Because that is what has led me to some extent. Mm. Yeah. Just knowing what you want. This is my goal. This is what I want to achieve. And then what do I need to do mm. to get there? And you work at it. I love it. You know, yeah. we've been shooting this from nine o'clock in the morning. We've already gone through three seasons. <laughs> we came on, it was cloudy. Yes. The sun came out. It was even uh, our cameraman, Aizo, was complaining about the, the light effect. Now it's raining. But I'm not complaining because it's all a blessing. Yes. Thunderstorm. Yes, thunderstorm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so it's a blessing. Keep up with us. Some snow may even decide to fall. <laughs> so let's continue with this story. So... 2005, you embark on this task of expansion. Uh, get this funding, um, and it is goals that, are that have been set out. Uh, be in every district. I like, to, I like that. Bef this is before, of course, the new constitution. Yes. Um, we do have a new president uh, at the time, and therefore the economy, as you had previously said, is looking up. Yeah, at that yeah. time, Mr. Moikibaki was in presidency. Yeah. Uh, anything before we enter 2006, is there anything that you want to specifically touch that happened in 2005 in your life or not? At this time, you have your three children. Yes, um, because I got the last one in 2004. Uh -huh. So I have three girls now. 2004? Yes, just before I new joined New job, new equity. motherhood. <laughs> <laughs> I joined equity when Lisa was a few months old. Uh -huh. Yeah, so, so that was exciting. Um, and then, of course, you know, the the I can talk about now the my own transition no problem from private practice to the bank tell me about it yeah so the transition was quite interesting mm -hmm. because I'm coming from a legal background um, and now I have to almost learn something new mm. because banking is new to me mm. and and this is in the context of I'm a senior officer of the bank, so I cannot call myself the lawyer. Mm. I have to be a banker, and I have to figure out what is banking all about. Mm. Um, what is the business all about? What are the value drivers of the bank? Because, mm. you know, for me to support from a legal perspective, unless I understand the business, yep, I, understand. I mean, I cannot have any impact. Because my role is to support the business. So I took a lot of time to understand banking, understand the business model. So give me an example. When you're saying, what are some of the things that you had to learn or relearn or unlearn? Like, give me an example of one or two things. <laughs> Something very basic, like the audited accounts of the bank. Uh, because, you know, I'm not a finance person. Mm. So I had to study and understand the, the financial statements of equity, the audited financial yes. statements, because I needed to understand. When people talk about non-performing loans, what, what are they talking mean? about? 
when people talk about uh, cost to income ratio, what are they talking about? Wow. When people talk about, the investor asks about return on equity. Yes. What's your return on equity? Because equity has had one of the highest mm. returns, equity and return on assets. What does that mean? And how do you get there? What are the ratios that are good when they are high? <laughs> uh, you know, like the returns. Yes. Which ones are good when they are low? Like the non-performing loans. That's what I mean. Wow. So I went out of my way to really understand the business. So did you do a course? Like what, what, how? Yeah, I did very, various courses. Um, I've done several courses in uh, Strathmore, uh, done finance for non-finance managers, leadership programs. Because you see now in that position, you are a leader in mm. the institution. You have to start now leading others. So I've done uh, programs on microfinance because I also wanted to understand how it works because that was the only way I could add value to the business. So I did quite a lot. You're self you are constantly self-improving. Yes, in addition to, of course, governance programs because essentially I was also the governance officer. Uh, so I have also done several courses on governance. And then when I got onto the board, I also did the effective director because you also need now to understand the role of a director in the context of a business. Mm -hmm. what, what is a director supposed to do? It's a strategy formulation, an oversight, it's, um, it's a risk management, it's governance and all that. Mm. So I have done all that. So you really have to have a lot of work to do. Wow. Yeah. You are... You are your intentionality to sharpen your skill is is commendable. Yes. Uh, yeah. And respectable. Also, let me say. Because <laughs> it's not easy. Going back to school is not, <laughs> it's not a walk in the park. But also, yeah. it's the reason why you've been constantly growing. Yes. And eventually, a little bit later, uh, when I realized that equity was growing very fast and it was going through very many phases of growth, um, my master's was actually in leadership, innovation, and change. Mm. And what that's did you what, do that? That's what I did uh, for my master's. Twenty, I think it was twenty fourteen. Yeah. And where did you do it? Twenty fourteen. No, where, where, where? York St John University in the UK. In the UK. Yes. Okay. Mm. And you've also gone to Stanford. Yeah, I, I no, I went to Strathmore and ISE. Okay. For the advanced management program. But I also did uh, the Harvard, Harvard Advanced Management Program. Wow. But that was much later in 2018. So at every level, you do what you, what you think, the skills that you need to take you to the next level. Mm. Because now by that time, I had just been appointed the group executive director. Yes. And, and I needed now to up my skills mm. in terms of my new responsibilities in the region. So it, it, it really is not in isolation or in abstract. It is based on the next level. Yes. Where do you want to get to the next level? Somebody says with every level comes a new devil. Yeah, exactly. And therefore you need and the you skills. And you have to figure it out. <laughs> you have to figure out uh, where you are and then what is it that you need to up your game. And that's exactly what I've been doing. Okay. Mm. So let's go into the listing. Yes. Uh, becoming a private listed company, PLC. No, public, public listed company. Public listed public, company. Sorry, sorry yes. public listed company yes. on the Nairobi Stock Exchange. Yes. But actually, equity is also listed on other stock exchange. Yeah, it's a Nairobi first uh -huh. and then cross-listing in Uganda and Rwanda Securities Exchange. Wow. Okay. Yes. We, but it started with Nairobi. It started with Nairobi. So what was the decision to list? The decision to list was, um, first of all, you remember we talked about giving equity a national outlook. Uh -huh. And we felt that once you open up the shareholding, because once you list, you open up shareholding to everybody in anywhere. Yes. Actually, not just in Kenya. We have a lot of foreign investors. Yes. So you open up the listing, Helios. or the ownership, yeah. to anybody in the world who wants to buy the stock. Yeah. So you open the ownership to a global audience. Yes. And then secondly... Listing comes with its own very high levels of disclosure and transparency. 
Wow. Everything that a listed company does is out there in the media. It's out there in the public. Mm. So you'll ascend to another level of disclosure and transparency by listing. Mm. And we examined and said, we want to be held to account by opening ourselves to scrutiny by everybody. The regulators are doing their part, but the public also needs to come in because they have a stake in us. Mm -hmm. That was the second list, the, the second reason. The third reason was obviously to position the brand at a higher level because uh -huh. once you become a publicly listed company, even in terms of visibility, mm. you move a notch higher. Okay. So that those were the three reasons. You know, you've talked about um, visibility and mm. transparency. Yes. But with that, especially with the radicalness of what was happening, also comes, and we're going to talk about the process of listing and the share prices that was listed because that is intriguing to me. Yes. But I also can imagine you guys are going against the grain when it comes to the banking industry. Yes. Did that come with its own, uh, uh, I don't want to call it, not resistance, but opposition? Yes. Was it tough? Were you... Yeah, it, it was tough because, um, first of all, people did not understand how come equity was growing that fast. Yes. So, to be honest, and I'm sure the people who are in the market at that time, they know that at some quarters, equity was described as a bubble. As a bubble? Yeah, because people could not understand the breakneck speed that it was growing. Yes. So they, they could not quite and even this comprehend. Model, how is this model working? Oh, you know, how the model. So some people ask, okay, so these guys are banking the poor, as they call them. They didn't understand that nobody is poor. Mm. Because, I mean, they have an income. Yes. So they cannot be poor. It's only that probably they don't make as much as some people. Yes. But they, there's something that they can save. So they're asking, how, 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 how is this possible? Do they have money to save? When they borrow a loan, will they pay? Do they have capacity to pay? Mm -hmm. And they could not quite comprehend. So our, our role was actually to convince the market that the model makes sense. And, and it's simply because those people who are earning, earning the income mm. and they save with us. And after six months, we are telling you that we will consider even giving you a loan mm. because you have already shown by your track record that you have demonstrable cash flows coming. Yes. So why can't we trust you with our money if you have trusted us with wah, wah, your money? Wah, wah. So that was one of the things that it took time for the market to understand. So it almost became like a mystery. Mm. And we have done a lot of education, even for the investor analysts, and for our customers and for, you know, the investors themselves, you know, just to get them to understand how, how does this model work? Yes. Let me ask, you know, <coughs> I can hear you talk this story mm. and because you have gone before us, I say potholes filled up by those who came before me. Yes. Because you've gone before, mm. we can hear this and know if they did it, maybe I can try this. Mm. Who were, had anybody done this that you could look up to and, and, and replicate what they had done? <coughs> no, no, no. Uh, because it was very unique. Because to the uh, continent? To the continent. Because most of the, 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 the people who are in the space who are doing high margin kind of business mm. for the customers who had a lot of money. Yep. That was the, actually the reality on the ground. And that is why they were disputing and doubting whether it can work. So equity is the first from an African perspective? Actually, not from an African. From a global then? From a global perspective. Yeah. The only other place the model was tried and tested was Grameen model. I don't know if you've heard Bangladesh. Mm -hmm. So there was this uh, institution called Grameen. But they were focusing a lot on the microfinance. Mm. They did not, eventually I think they went into full banking model. But you see what equity does was we did microfinance, but then eventually we did the full banking model with yes. all the banking services. Yes. 
so that the customers had a one-stop shop. So it was very unique. Wow. Yes. <laughs> okay. I, mm. when I, I think it's even me, it's, do, it's dawning on me just the impact that equity has yeah, had yeah, yeah. globally. Globally. Uh, yes, I'm beginning to understand. And that is why also, if you check, if you have read um, the history of equity, we have had so many case studies mm. done on equity mm. by all the major universities. Yes. Harvard, Stanford, Stanford, Columbia, I say, Lagos, name it. They have done <laughs> case Oxford. studies because they are trying to understand how does this model work? Yes. And how can a model work if it's focusing on the bottom of the pyramid? Because the previous assumption was that there's no money to be made there. Mm. But we said, we are mass bank. Come in through the doors. If you want a bank account, we made it easy for you. Yeah. Just come in and get the service you want. Okay, so now you begin the process of listing, which yes. is rigorous, especially even, I can imagine from your, you yes. must have had a couple of sleepless months. <laughs> Not months. <laughs> it took one and a half years Whoa. to get the approval to list mm. on the stock exchange. And um, the process is rigorous, you're right, because, um, you know, the regulator has to be satisfied. You know, they have looked at you from all perspectives and decided this is a company that we can present to the public. Mm. Because remember, the regulator is mm. the custodian of the public interest and the defender of the public interest. So it took a lot of scrutiny. You remember we talked about scrutiny? Yes. Even to allow the application. And eventually we were allowed in August 2006. And after one and a half years. And what price did you list at? The first day of trading, 125. Whoa. Against a valuation of 70. Wait, hold on, I don't understand that. <laughs> the brokers we had asked to do the valuation, they had said equity is worth 70 shillings. And we told them, no, we feel it's worth more. Uh -huh. so, so, and on the first day of trading, the price was 125. So what happens? Like, if they did... <laughs> I'm, I'm okay. This is where my lack of understanding comes. Mm. The, the the brokers have said we've done our research. This, that, the other. Yes. We think the price that you should list is at seventy two or yes. at 70. 70. Said seven, sorry, seventy. I think what they didn't understand or was the the premium that the market placed on equity. Mm. You know, because you know the market price is a function of what the market thinks about you. Yes. So the market was already starting to sort of like understand the way these guys are doing their business this is this thing is going to be very big i want in i want to be in yeah. so they were ready to pay 125 on day one wow of trading even as we were surprised by the way <laughs> <laughs> yeah so it was very good value for the for the shareholders nice yeah hey, guys who had shares. and after that there was so many i mean there was so much interest and you know the shareholder base grew from 2,500 at listing to 28,000 wow. over a very short period because everybody wants to own a share. Okay. And that was quite amazing. Yeah. yeah. That's, how, how, how does it feel now? Once 2006, mm. you've gone into the market, you've yes. been listed. You're a PLC right now, public listed company. Yes. Uh, and then, then is that when now you hit your one million? Yeah. Customer? So the same year, uh, right? What happened? In in addition to the one twenty five mm. per share price, <laughs> which was very exciting, yes. was the business of the bank doubled on listing. Doubled. Yes. And uh, the way we interpreted that was now more visibility, more confidence mm. in the market. And then remember also a lot of our customers were banking with other institutions in addition mm. to equity. Mm. A lot of them now became fully banked with equity. Yeah. Because now they were feeling more confident and equity has now gone to another level of disclosures and all that. So it was a plus plus. So your balance sheet doubled. The balance sheet doubled. And we hit the one million customer later. The same year. I think it was in November. Yes. And we had listed in 
August. So that was also really exciting for us. And by 2006, you were everywhere apart from Lamu? Uh, no, no, no. That took a bit of time. Okay, that... I can't quite remember the exact okay. year, but by 2010, we were in all the counties mm. because that is when the new constitution was done. And let's talk about the technology. You know, mm -hmm. the, the, the technology that equity, the tech... Mm. Just let's let's have a conversation about you know now we talk about mobile apps and it's it's, yes. it's, it's a norm. In fact, if you don't have a mobile banking app, you're like I'm never joining that bank. Mm. But what what was it like then for you? What what was that? The technology. Yes. The technology did. And why was it so radical at the time? Because we anticipated the growth. So we said we have to get one of the top rated. Actually, the the this um rating called the Gartner. Mm. Uh, rating, it is one of the top, top rated okay. uh, because it has, it is multi-currency, mm -hmm. multi-country because we also knew we wanted to go to the region. Yes. So we had to get a system and of course um, a, a huge capacity for accounts because we knew we are growing accounts very fast. Mm. So we needed to get a system that allows you to grow very quickly, which is what we were anticipating. Guess, yeah. And that system has worked very well for us. So, you know, because you have to anticipate mm. where you want to go as a business. Mm. And then you prepare today. Mm. So when you do a technology platform, you don't do for the business as it exists today. Yep. You say, in another five years or another 10 years, I want to have 10 million customers. Mm. Is this system capable? So that's what we did. Okay. Yeah. So 2006, listing, mm. uh, growth, Where? Wh what about you in terms of the company now? Now, when we finished the listing, I got an added responsibility. <laughs> <laughs>